From what I've heard, boomerangs are quite difficult to throw, or at least they're quite difficult to get them to come back to yourself. Now, this is a very cheap boomerang I bought from Amazon. Uh, it's a three-bladed boomerang. Uh, they seem to be really common nowadays. Apparently, they're easy to throw, and um, I think even some of the world champions use them. So, if you want to argue about it being a proper boomerang or not, then I don't really know. This is the one I've got. So, um, let's do some research and see if I can make it come back to myself. Wind's coming towards me. I'm going to throw it just off to the side a bit. Apparently, that's what you're supposed to do. Just throw it straight vertically and uh, pray it comes back. Here goes nothing. Okay, I was hoping for a first try uh, catch then, but hey, these things are meant to be difficult, so test try number two. So when I'm throwing it, I'm trying to throw it as vertically as possible, but I think I'm putting some angle into it because it seems to be going up. Um, when it's angled like that, it obviously has more lift, so I'm trying to throw it as straight as possible. It's quite tricky, this. Oh, that's lower. That's lower, that's lower. That's, that's low, that's low, that's low. That's looking good, that's looking good. came back to me, just didn't catch it. This is the one, I can feel it, I can feel it. Come on, come on, that's perfect, that's perfect, that's perfect. <laughs> yes. I felt it. I knew it was coming. Come on. You can do this again, Tom. <laughs> oh my God. That was like... I had a cup of tea. Now you might be wondering, why do I need to learn how to throw this boomerang? Well, I wanted to gather some data on the boomerang before building this launcher, because what I want to know is if there's a correlation between how fast it spins and how fast it moves forwards. Now shortly after I was throwing that boomerang, and before I made my cup of tea, I decided to film some slow motion shots of me throwing the boomerang. And what I found is that as the boomerang flies through the air, there's an advancing blade, which is the blade going over the top as it's moving forwards, and then there's a retreating blade, which is the blade going underneath as it moves forwards. And if you watch this slow motion footage, you'll see that the retreating blade is almost stationary at the lowest point of its spin. It almost looks as though the boomerang is walking through the air. Now this information is really useful because it's essentially how the boomerang curves in flight and comes back to the thrower. Each blade of the boomerang is shaped like an aerofoil on a wing on an aeroplane. There is a really sharp curve at the front and a really shallow curve at the rear. And when air is flowing over this, it produces lift. Now because when you throw a boomerang, you throw it in the vertical direction, it's producing lift horizontally in this direction. Now the most important thing about this lift information is the differential and airflow over the advancing blade versus the retreating blade. If you just watch this slow motion footage again, you'll notice, as I mentioned, that the retreating blade almost stops and the advancing blade is going really fast because it not only has the rotational speed of the blade, but also the forward speed of the whole boomerang. Now because there is a differential and airflow over the advancing blade versus the retreating blade, the advancing blade is actually producing more lift than the retreating blade, which you would think would cause the boomerang to rotate like this, because there's a larger lift force going towards you at the camera, and there's less lift force at the bottom here, causing it to rotate like this. But because the boomerang's spinning, it's acting like a gyroscope. And you may know that with gyroscopes, or any kind of spinning mass, there is something called gyroscopic precession. So if a force is applied here, at the top here, it's actually delayed 90 degrees. So instead of rotating this way towards the camera, it's delayed 90 degrees and rotates this way, which makes the boomerang curve and come back to the thrower. 
Now you may be thinking, yeah, that's how the three-bladed boomerang works, but how do the traditional V-shaped boomerangs work that look sort of like this? Well, I've made a little animation here that will hopefully help you visualize it. Basically, there's still an advancing blade at the top and a retreating blade at the bottom. And the differential in lift between these two is delayed by 90 degrees due to gyroscopic precession, which causes it to curve round and come back to the thrower. Now, theoretically, you can make any shape of boomerang work as long as it has blades that produce lift and is spinning fast enough so there is a differential in lift between the top and the bottom and also has enough inertia so that it has a gyroscopic precession and curves around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this knowledge of the aerofoil shaped blade and see if I can make my own two bladed boomerang. So my homemade two bladed boomerang worked pretty well. It does need a slightly different throwing technique to the three bladed boomerang. It needs to be spun a lot quicker because it has less inertia because it's a lot lighter. Uh, therefore the rotational speed slows down a lot quicker. And also only having two blades it has a lot less lift. Now you may be wondering why it has a fancy curve shape to it. And quite honestly as an aerospace engineer I could talk about the shape and the aerofoil and everything for ages. Uh, but I'm about six and a half minutes into this video and I haven't even talked about the launch yet. So let's move on to that. Now, I've been thinking about how to make this boomerang launcher for quite some time now and I've gone through quite a few different design ideas. One idea was to make almost like a spring-loaded robotic arm type thing uh, with an elbow. I'd probably not have a wrist but like an elbow and then as soon as it stops you have like two fingers that grip the boomerang that release it and add spin to it and it just sounded like a real nightmare to configure. I also had another idea where I made like an axle in the center of mass of the boomerang that it would spin about. I could spin it up with an electric motor and then just launch it from a regular catapult. So get the RPM set and then just launch it from a catapult. But you know how sometimes the simplest ideas take the longest to come up with? And I think I found a solution to it. You probably haven't noticed, but with this boomerang, there's a notch cut out of it. And there's a very special design feature to this notch. If you hang the boomerang from a pivot so it can swing down below, there'll be an imaginary line that goes straight through the center of mass, basically the point where the boomerang will balance, which is around about here. So if you imagine there's a vertical line that goes straight down to the center of mass, this notch is cut at 80 degrees from this imaginary line. So it's not quite perpendicular, but it's 80 degrees. And what this means is that if I put a pivot in this notch, I can swing this boomerang round and it won't come off. So that allows me to spin the boomerang but how will I launch it? Let me explain. So this boomerang launcher is essentially going to be a torsion catapult. Imagine this as the throwing arm on a catapult. At this end, you have a really tightly wrapped rope, which applies a spring force in this direction. So when the arm's cocked back like this, if you release it, it will want to go and swing up like that. Now the boomerang will be attached to this end of the arm and there'll be some kind of axle uh, that the boomerang can pivot around. So this notch will hook onto that axle. So when it's released, the arm will want to swing up and drag the boomerang with it. Now, due to centripetal force, the boomerang will want to swing round until the center of mass lines up with uh, this swinging arm. Now, this arm will eventually come to a stop. There'll be some kind of block that it will stop at. And usually this is where the projectile comes out of the arm or you know out of the bucket or whatever you have and goes flying into the air. But because this boomerang will endlessly swing around this uh, pole, just like what I did when I swung it around this uh, screwdriver, it will just swing around and it will just keep swinging around until all the speed is lost. So the way to make it release from this uh, axle right here is to add another one about here. So basically as the boomerang swings around, as soon as it touches this secondary axle, instead of pivoting around this axle, it now pivots around this one, which means it will unhook the axle which is causing it to stay to the arm, which will mean it will hopefully rotate and disappear and well, hopefully come back. But that's basically how the release mechanism works. And it's taken me forever to come up with this. Um, it's a really simple idea now that I've obviously showed you. Um, but yeah, to actually come up with it took me quite some time. 
That's the theory behind my design. Uh, I have no idea if it's going to work, but I suppose that's the whole point of this video. So let's get to making this uh, boomerang launcher. So the launch is ready for its first test. I've uh, added quite a bit of tension to the rope. I'm not sure if it's too much. Um, what I'll do is I'll quickly load it. It's quite scary pulling this thing back. It's quite a lot of tension in this rope. Put the locking mechanism over the top. Hook the boomerang onto the axle. Okay, all cameras are recording. Put the release rope over the trigger and um, I suppose it's ready to launch in three two one <laughs> that actually went forwards right let's check the high speed to see if it was spinning that was pretty good actually Right, I'm gonna do a few more test launches uh, whilst the wind is still high. I'm not sure I'm going to get any uh, returning boomerangs today. Um, I'll probably try increasing the tension to see if I can get some more uh, forward speed. Um, and then when the wind comes down, we'll see if we can get it to hit itself. That's a bit of a weird thought, isn't it? A catapult that hits itself. <laughs> right, so I've got up rather early this morning because it seems to be the only time where there's hardly any wind. And right now there's pretty much zero wind. Now you'll see I'm holding two different boomerangs. Uh, this is a really thin three millimeter plywood, um, three bladed boomerang. And this is a newer version of the previous boomerang I had. Um, I've spent a bit more time sanding the aerofoil on it. And basically I've built these uh, to see if I can get them to work at lower um, throw speed. Um, I haven't tested them in the launch yet, so that's gonna be something new. Um, I suppose we better give it a launch before the wind kicks up. Let's try the newer two-bladed boomerang version first. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right release angle. It's the same as what I used for the old boomerang. Let's see if we can get this to come back. In three, two, one. Okay, that is a slightly higher launch angle. It instantly hit the floor. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. 
Who said boomerang launches would be easy? Probably no one actually. <laughs> I've just realised that if this boomerang does actually come back, I'm in the firing line, as well as the catapult. So, three, two, one. <sighs> this isn't getting any better. I suppose at least it's consistently throwing it into the ground. So I've come back out again. It's uh, very windy now, but I'm hoping that I can use this headwind to my advantage. Uh, the previous launches when there was no wind, the boomerang will go out and it would do a nice curve, but it just wouldn't uh, come all the way back to the launcher. Uh, I did a bit of research on the internet and apparently some boomerangs do require a slight headwind uh, just to make them come all the way back. Now the problem is with this is that obviously the wind isn't consistent so to have the launcher consistently get the boomerang to return it's going to be very difficult but i suppose it's just a variable that i'm gonna to have to deal with so let's see if i can make use of this headwind and in three two one Almost hit the slow motion camera. That was by far the closest to the launch pad yet. Landed just here. So I reckon with a bit more tension, I can hit myself with a boomerang launcher. In three, two, one. It would help if there weren't power lines there. two times in a row. That's consistent. <laughs> so I reckon the launcher only has a few more shots in it uh, before it falls apart or the wood's starting to split. So I guess the only thing to do is just up the tension and hope it doesn't explode before launch. In three, two, one. Not quite, very close, but not quite. <laughs> so close, yet so far. So yeah, this launcher is uh, pretty much toast for today. I mean, that's how much it's bowing uh, inwards just from, you know, not even the pulled back uh, mode. So when I pull the arm back, that bends in way too far. I suppose what I could do is put another beam between here uh, to strengthen it. Um, but yeah, I think it's time to go in. So I've reinforced the launcher now by putting an extra uh, spacer of wood in between here to hold the beams apart. Hopefully it will hold up this time. Um, I think this will probably be the last time I'm going to give this a go. So I really hope it works. Still got the strong wind uh, because it's the same day as when I was filming earlier. It's very gusty still. So I might be out here for quite a while, just randomly launching this. And I'm only doing it for that one magic shot of when it hopefully comes round and hits the launcher all myself. 
in three, two, one. One. So let's talk about the results. I originally wanted to build this boomerang launcher to launch a boomerang that would circle round and then hit the launcher itself. However, after launching this thing 89 times in the last day, I've had to give in. Now some may call this a failure, however I've learned quite a lot from this. Basically, I've made a list of all the variables involved in uh, trying to get the boomerang to come back to the launcher. Uh, these are just a few that I've just got on my list. Uh, these include wind direction, wind speed, air humidity, thermal lift, boomerang shape, boomerang weight, boomerang dihedral or anhedral, uh, the boomerang blade airfoil, the boomerang blade angle of attack, the boomerang spin rate, the forward launch velocity, the drag of the boomerang, the differential in blade lift, the launcher torsion, the launcher movement and release angle. Uh, so those are just 16 variables I could come up with really quickly and out of those 16, only eight of them are relatively controllable. Uh, that includes stuff like the boomerang shape, the weight of the boomerang, the uh, forward launch velocity from the launcher, the torsion in the catapult. Uh, there are a few that are still uh, relatively controllable, such as the uh, twist in the, the blades on the boomerang, and also the bend up or down, which is a dihedral of the boomerang. However, these are only classified as technically controllable but not realistically controllable uh, because every time I would launch it as the boomerang hit the ground it would sort of bend the boomerang a little bit and the next flight I would launch it and it wouldn't do anything like the previous flight would. So even if you could build the most perfect launcher you know using some kind of electronic servo uh, with like force feedback and everything like that so they would perfectly launch the boomerang every single time uh, there's just way too many variables in the boomerang itself and also in the air that the boomerang's flying through. So although the boomerang didn't come all the way back round and hit the launcher itself, uh, there were about 11 launches which I would classify as catchable. And I classify a launch as catchable if the boomerang can be caught within two steps of where it's launched from. So basically, if I could have taken two steps and reached out and grabbed the boomerang. So a two to three meter distance from the uh, catapult. Now, these 11 launches out of 89 total launches is about 12% success rate, um, which isn't great, but then again, the amount of variables, I, I could take that as a success. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way the launcher turned out. It seems to launch the boomerangs quite consistently. Um, obviously, I need to build some kind of thing that will hold it at an angle constantly, um, because it always fell over after every launch, uh, and that's... I guess you could classify that as another variable, but when you look, watch the slow motion footage, the boomerang is long gone by the time it falls over. So it's not really a huge issue. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this launch next. Uh, I don't really fancy doing another 89 to 100 launches out in that field. Uh, it was quite exhausting chasing boomerangs um, because they don't always land right next to you. Sometimes they land 20 meters away. And uh, I was trying to get a decent shot of the boomerang launcher, so every time I would uh, come back to the boomerang launcher I would sit down so it looks like I'm not doing anything so uh, yeah I had to sit down stand up run 89 times load up the uh, boomerang launcher restart the camera <sighs> yeah it was an exhausting day 
So as I won't be using the boomerang launcher again, I might just turn it into a regular torsion catapult for launching tennis balls or golf balls or something. Um, that could quite easily be done just by modifying this release head. But um, yeah, the launcher itself worked really well. So that's the end of this boomerang launcher video. It's my first full project uh, video I've done in quite some time, you know, not split up into parts. And uh, I've quite enjoyed it. Uh, it allowed me to spend a bit more time on working out how things work and also spend a bit more time on the video editing. So if you enjoyed this slightly longer than usual uh, full project video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. If you think anyone else will be interested in something so ridiculous as this, then um, please share the video with your friends. And a huge, huge thanks to all of my Patreons for making these videos possible. Uh, I can't thank you enough. So if you wish to support me on Patreon, my crazy ideas, and if you have any more suggestions, then um, yeah, please head over to my Patreon page. Thanks once again for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.